rider. Attention. Present arms. the resurrection and life, says the Lord. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. Anyone who lives and believes in me will not die. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called your son, Anthony, from this life. Fulfill his faith and hope in you, and lead him safely, safe to heaven, to be happy with you forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us reason, re listen to the scriptures. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus told his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant the gospel of the Lord. This body is Christ. My dear friends, like I said, we have just gathered here to be a friend and call me Father. I think. Uh, Jim Reeves, even though I don't think he's a minister, but he said it absolutely right. That this world is not our home. We are just passing through. That is what it is. And the scriptures is making it very, very clear to remind us that death is not an annihilation. No. It is a transformation. And that's why he's given us a scripture passage 
Just like you plant something, first of all, has got to die. And after that, what happens? It germinates again. That is precisely what happens to life. It is not an annihilation, it is a transformation. And we are commending our brother to the hands of God. Because even the psalmist said it right. The just man sins seven times a day. And what does that mean? If God were to mark our gifts, none of us may even be worthy. But out of his merciful kindness, we then, my dear friends, commend Anthony Fontana to the hands of God. And he has done the greatest service as a Korean veteran. I always tell people that life is in itself is not easy. What more? The life of a soldier. And he has done the best, all the best that he could do to serve his nation. And the implication is that serving the nation is as a soldier means you are ready to stake your life for that. Who will stay here and also bless their tomb. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother, Anthony Fontana, may sleep there in peace until you awaken him to glory. For you are the resurrection and life. Then he will see the light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Anthony Fontana. Do not count his deed against him, for in his heart he desires to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, so may your mercy join to the angels in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Samuel Fontana, also known as Tony, was 77 years old. Tony was born December 19, 1932, in Modesto, California, and spent most of his life in Northern California, but has been in the Walla Walla Valley of Washington State for about 20 years. He recently moved to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, to be with his two children, Stephanie and Joey Fontana. He died June 29, 2010, in hospice at Mercy Hospital in Oklahoma City. Tony is an American hero from the Korean War and is honored as a long-term POW of that conflict. He joined the Army at 17, went to boot camp at Fort Ord, California, continued training at Fort Lawton, Seattle, Washington, until he deployed to Japan in late 1948. He was assigned to 1st Company, 3rd Battalion, 21st Infantry Regiment, which deployed to the Republic of Korea on July 4th, 1950. His and other regiments were the first in contact with the enemy in July 1950 
when North Korea invaded the South. He was captured in Yokochawan shortly after hostilities began, and his regiment was decimated by the North Korean army, supported by the Chinese. Tony was actively involved in combat when he and several others were captured. Tony survived the infamous death march of servicemen and civilian captives from South Korea deep into North Korea to China. He survived nearly 38 months in captivity in POW camps in North Korea under the North Korea Army and Chinese captors. Tony was noted as a patriot and punished by his captors for his loyalty to the United States and its allies. He was very proud of that fact. Tony continued his service for a while in the Army after being repatriated in September 1953. He made Buck Sergeant a couple of times, he said, but he's proud to have been a corporal. Tony lived in San Francisco area for years, working at different jobs. He has family members in that area. Tony has three children, Robert, <coughs> Robert Bob Fontana of Silverdale, Washington, Stephanie Fontana and Joey Fontana of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Bob lives in Silverdale with his wife and his two adult children reside there also. He has suffered from PTSD and other disorders related to his service to his country. Despite this, Tony leaves behind a throng of lifelong friends and brothers in arms that are inspired by his fighting spirit. Family, friends, and counselors are aware that Tony was a casualty of war when it came to some relationships. He shared with many of us his deep, deep love for his children, family, and friends, and later in life began to work on them. He was a fighter here too, and was able to achieve of his dreams of being with his children before he passed on. He shared his story with some fortunate few that were in awe at his experiences. Most of us found his stories hard to believe, but we all found out that Tony was truthful about it all. Tony loved to share stories of his travels and experiences. He had many. He loved the outdoors and was at peace with the mountains, the rivers, or just about anywhere he could camp and fish. He was a collector of sorts and shared his passion with his children. He loved animals and, and always had pets around. Tony taught some fortunate few what fighting was all about. He fought cancer and other health issues to the very end. It is entirely fitting that he be buried in a national cemetery with other American heroes. Rest in peace, brother. Good day, too.